In this video, we're gonna talk about the top five quotes from Steve Cohen. Stay tuned. Hey traders, a very warm welcome to you. So in the Stock Markets book by Jack Schwager, we have Steve Cohen, if you're not familiar with him. Uh, there was a little bit of controversy about him relatively recently, but forget about that. Let's look at some of the top five quotes he has had in his book, Stock Market Wizards by Jack Schwager, another one that I recommend. I've put them on the computer here, so let's go. The first one he's got is, a stock move is 40% down to the market, 30% down to the sector, but only 30% down to the stock. And his comment was, listen, I don't know if those percentages are exactly correct, but the conceptually the idea makes sense. And you know, if you've been trading stocks for any period of time, you'll know that's exactly pretty much right. Most of the time, if the market's getting hammered, your stock is getting hammered. If the market's up, your stock is up. If you're trading stocks, the sector as well, if you're trading retail, you're trading supermarkets, you're trading mining, you're trading oil and gas, whatever. If that's up and the market's up, likely is your stock gonna be up and 30% of it is down to the actual stock. That's when you get the differences between stocks within a sector. So one stock might be outperforming another, and that's when you get that slight difference over time, because even the market may be going up, the sector is doing well, individual stocks, company specific commercial um, actions or whatever it may be, or the way they're running a business, that's only gonna be 30% of the influence, and you're gonna start to see that on the chart over the longer term. So. That makes sense. So in other words, if you think you're picking a stock, I guess the takeaway from a trader's perspective is if you think you're picking a really good stock, it makes absolutely no sense, even if you're picking the best stock ever, if it's in a sector that's underperforming, if it's in a market that's underperforming, your stock is not gonna do very well or less likely to do very, very well. You need to think of the market first, then you need to think of the sector and the stock pretty much similar. Like I said, the percentages aren't perfect, but broadly speaking, that's about right. Okay, number two, his best traders make money, so his, best, his best trader, should I say, makes money 63% of the time. That's his best trader, okay? Most are 50 to 55%. So, and this is, a, this is a comment from Steve himself. So, you must ensure your losses are as small as they can be. And he also says, and that your winners are bigger. You know, I've covered this so many times, and if you're a subscriber, you're gonna know, and it's just worth us remembering as traders, myself included, you included, anyone watching this included, keep the losses small. We know we should be doing it. Everything we read from traders who have made serious cash are saying exactly the same thing. Paul Tudor Jones, uh, Jesse Livermore, Steve Cohen, forget about all the all the, all the news around them. The point is everybody knows that to get the returns, you have to keep the losses small and make sure those wins are big. And even his best trades are 50, 55%. Most of his trades are 55%. And there's some out there that are 30% accurate. So to be 30% accurate, you've got to be on those losses like that. They've got to be out of there, on there. And, when, and the most important thing is, of course, when you're in a winner, to run it for as much as you can in the right market environment. Easier said than done, I recognize that, but if we can work on that, that's how we're gonna to get to the top level with a multi-millionaire guys, billionaire guys, should I say, in the case of Steve Cohen, a plane. And number three, move with your feet if you think you're wrong. What does he mean by that? So he would say to his traders, listen, if you think you're wrong in a position, halve it. If you still think you're wrong, halve it again. The point is then you're at least you're down to a very really small size. It's not gonna damage you as a trader. The point is, don't sit there and get run over by the truck. Now, obviously, if you're intraday trading, this could still apply. It may not apply, but I was going to say it doesn't apply, but actually it could still apply. If you're in a position, you don't like it, and it's and you haven't got to hit your stop level yet, just halve it. Halve it again. More likely for a swing trader. You're in a position, you've not actually hit your, your uh, you know, finite stop level, but you've gone, you know what, I'm not sure of it. Just halve it. If there's a doubt in there, cut it because at least then you're not gonna get run over. You could always add the half back on. If it goes in your direction, it's looking great, add the half back on. If you're still not happy, halve it again. The point is you're doing something. You're not just sitting there like a rabbit in headlights. And then of course, the problem you have is if you sit there like a rabbit in headlights and you get hammered on the trade, you're gonna say, ah, oh, I had my doubts near, but I didn't listen to them. At least now, if you get hammered, you know, hey, I've done something about it, I've mitigated the risk, I've, I've capped the damage. But if you happen to be a false alarm and it carries on, you say, you know what, I was just prudent risk manager. I'm going back to the initial point of, I need to make sure that the majority of my trades, uh, my losing trades are so, so small, and I've done the right thing there. Uh, and how can I improve on that decision-making process? 
you know, moving forward. All right, what have we got here? Uh, number four, know who you are as a trader. This is a good one. And, you know, I've talked about this before. Um, you've got to know what you are and what you're not. And he's got a great uh, kind of analogy here or a great um, comparison, should I say. He says, listen, if you're a day trader, day trade. If you're an investor, invest. And, you know, we mentioned this many times on the channel where well, we've talked about, you know, knowing what you are as a trader and playing to your strengths. And this is the perfect thing he says. Here. It's, like, it's, just, it's like a comedian who gets up on stage and start, starts singing. What's he singing for? He's a comedian. So that's a really good way of saying, hey, there's no point. If you're an investor, what are you doing scalping a GBP USD? If you're a scalper and you've been watching market debt for a long time, and you're trading for ticks on the Bund, what are you doing investing in the next kind of technology to do with uh, electricity or whatever it may be? You get the point. You've got to know what you are and then just become very, very good at it. So we've done before. Final thing is number five. You can't control the market. Can you see that on the screen? You just about can, can't you? You can't control the market, but you can control your reaction. It's a great phrase. It's a brilliant quote. And it basically says, listen, you, know, you can't control the market. That's the thing we have to, to come to as traders, but we control you know, our response to the market. And he says here, I examine what I do all the time. That's what trading is all about. And that's where you know, self-awareness comes in as a trader. You can't control the market, it's gonna crash. You can't control it's gonna rally. You can't control it's gonna do nothing. All you control, control is your response to that. That's it. And risk management, of course, comes in there. But if he's constantly assessing you know, what he's doing, how he's responding. Is he adding to the position? Is he taking the position off? How does he feel about it? Is he letting it uh, compromise his future positions or is he letting it influence his future positions? All this kind of stuff, you know, needs to be tweaked and adjusted so you can become the very best trader uh, that you can be. All right, guys, thumbs up if you like this kind of stuff. See you in the next one. Take care. Keep the risk managed. Goodbye.